Uh, welcome to what I intend to be the second video in a series of bowl making videos. First one I made these these little bowls, uh, Carol Rothman's book, and uh, but these are, these are all practice. These are made out of pine. They're just uh, a practice bowl, and I'm gonna continue in that vein as a practice bowl. Uh, this is the pattern I used, but she has an alternate. An alternate version she says right here. What it says, uh, you need to make the following changes for this alternate version. She's using half inch zebra wood. Well, I'm not going to go with an exotic wood at this point. This is all practice and learning for me, and I'm not going to use an exotic wood. That's about $30 of wood uh, for me to buy. I'd make a couple of bowls out of that if I wanted to, but I'm just not going to spend that much money. This is poplar. I've actually had to add to it to get the right width. You can see a little bit of different color in it there. But um, I'm making do with what I got in my shop <coughs> on hand. Now, the other changes are the outer circle, this outer circle is seven and a quarter instead of seven inch. On the old, on the first one, it was seven inch. It's gonna go seven and a quarter. And the cutting angle is 38 degrees, not 28 degrees. And she says the base is inverted and thin to about a quarter inch, which means she assume that she planed it down or sanded it down and flipped it over. That, that's what I'm assuming that means. Also, I'm assuming that the width of the of the rings are staying three eighths. She doesn't say anything about that. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to mount me a blank piece of paper on that uh, poplar board. And I'm going to uh, glue me just a, you know, a blank piece of paper. I'm going to attempt to draw uh, this this pattern. I'll make my own pattern. I'm going to set my compass for the to make the seven and a quarter inch. And then I'm going to bring it down three eighths at a time until I get the four rings. And that'll leave a little larger base, a half inch, uh, quarter inch on each side looks like, which may make it the difference in the uh, base being flipped and fitting in there. But this, uh, I may be messing this up. I may be misinterpreting the uh, the instructions, but that's the way I understand it, and that's how I'm going to proceed. So let me mount me a piece of paper on that board. I'm going to tape it and put some paper on it and I'm draw the pattern. That, that way, too, if I mess the pattern up, I can pull that off and start over. So let me mount that and I'll see if I can draw this pattern. Okay, I got the uh, paper mounted. I split that. This is actually seven and a half inch uh, blank. I'm gonna make a seven and a quarter inch round blank out of it for the bowl. And I've got that mark at all four sides there. <clears throat> so that gives me a more accurate way of setting my compass, I believe, once I get this, get the compass set right in the center point there, then I can set it for these. That's the outer ring. Then I've got these three little, four little dots. I've tried it several times and I finally got it more accurate. I figured out a way to do it a little more accurately than instead of moving the ruler every time, just figure that I have a three eighths. I have a, I have a ruler that has eighths and sixteenths on it. So it's real easy to get the eighths on there. Just put it on there, not move it, just go down and count three and mark it. That was the most accurate way, instead of moving the ruler for every three-eighths mark. Uh, and I did that here, and they were okay, but once you get off a little bit, it uh, compounds as you move forward. So I think I've got that pretty accurate. I'm going to take my compass, and I'm going to set it right in the center of that, and uh, adjust it to draw on that line, and, and draw the outer circle, and work my way in.
Okay, so far so good, at least I think it's so far so good. Uh, pattern looks looks good. I don't know what fatal mistakes or assumptions I have made at this point. I've taken an awl and marked the entry holes where I'm going to drill to uh, drill my entry holes for the blade. So next I got to set the saw and I'm going to test that uh, angle. I'm going to set the angle for 38 degrees, cut something and see if I can uh, test that angle to make sure it's uh, pretty good. Uh, it worked real well on the last one using that little angle gauge that I have. It worked perfectly. So I'm going to do it the same way. But uh, I'm going to make a test cut on something and put it against a protractor or something to figure out if I got it close. Alright, I've set this at 38 degrees. I've tested it with two different I set it with my little gauge that I use. I made off Steve Good's pattern. And then I check the level with my, I have an app on my phone, which will give you a, a level or a degree. And uh, I checked it. It was like 0.7 off, 0.7 degrees off at, at level. So I just allowed for that and tested it. And I set it for 38 with the phone. And I cut I cut a piece and I used that that angle along with my phone to set the bed the uh, uh, bed on the, uh, the the drill over there the, the drill press and I went in and I drilled these holes on the drill press and the angles all match up between here and the drill I can check it with this piece of wood they're both the same and if I got these holes in in the proper center of the of the line, we shouldn't have any problem. There'll be a little sanding to do. I used a little smaller drill bit than I did on the last uh, bowl that I made. So first, I'm going to cut this outer line, and I'll compare it to all the, the angles I have everywhere to make sure everything's coming out right. And I'm going to take it and mark these outside the rings where these lines meet the edge. And I'll come back and we'll enter into that hole and cut the next one, cut that first ring off. Well, this ring will tell the story. Uh, when I went put through that hole that I drilled, it looked like it was perfectly straight with the blade in the, at this angle. I think I got the hole correctly drilled. And we'll cut this ring off and we'll take it over to the table and see how it matches up and, and mark the insides of the rings. I don't know if it's readily visible at this point or not, but this is going to be a wider mouth bowl, of course, and a much steeper angle than these and uh, I'm going to mark these rings that that uh, drill was was almost perfect in relation to the angle I'm very pleased with that I got that correct and I drilled it in a good spot we'll see how it works as we move forward but I think it's going to be okay it's going to be better than the last one And I should have minimal marks to sand out. This is poplar. It cuts very nicely. It'll sand very well too. It's not quite as soft as the pine, but it's still easy to work with. So I'll get it back to the saw. I'll cut those next uh, three rings off and do the same thing every time. Match them up and mark them and see how we're coming. It's uh, It's looking pretty good, looks to me like, as far as uh, it lining up on the outside. That's, that's better than anything I'd ever done except the last two, but the previous bowls I've done, I had lots of mismatch in those, but so far so good. Look like we're doing good on this. I got all the layers of the rings cut out. 
got them all marked. Actually, since I stacked or glued those boards together, you can line them up real nicely with the way they uh, look right there. They're probably even more accurate than my marks. But now that I've got this part done, I'm going to pull the patterns and sand the tops of these. I got them kind of marked and lined out where I want them. And I'm going to make sure that there's no gaps in between each ring. And then I'm going to glue them together. And once I get them glued, that's a two-step process to uh, get an opportunity to get the glue off that squeezes out before it dries. And then I'm going to uh, sand it. And on this one, I'm going to sand both inside and outside. Uh, and the other one I was supposed to have stopped between the inside and outside and glue the bottom on. And then sand it. But this time the bottom is going to be flipped over, inverted. And uh, i got to cut it in half about to about a quarter inch. And it's going to be the base. So I'm going to sand it independently. And I'm going to sand both inside and and outside of this and get it as nice and smooth as I can. It lines up really nicely. I'm really pleased with the way it's uh, fitting together. It's making a nice smooth size. won't take a lot of sanding. So uh, now let me work on getting those rings glued together and I'll work on the sanding and then I'll figure out I'm gonna, what I'm going to do with this. Uh, sanding, planing, chiseling, whatever. Uh, to get that down to about half. Okay, so I've been sanding and sanding. I've got all the drill marks sanded out of it, both inside and outside. Uh, they weren't too bad. I had one on the outside that was a little deeper than the rest, and I managed to smooth all that out, make it look good. I used uh, the little drum sander uh, on my drill press, plus I used a, a handheld jitter jitter sander, a quarter sheet sander, because uh, it's got a nice flat surface and it worked pretty good on it. And I was able to move through some grits doing that to get it to work it down pretty good and then smooth it out. And then I thought this is the base. Uh, what I did with that to get that down to that thickness is I, I cut to a depth with my little saw here. And it's an antique saw I've owned for 30 years probably. And then I just chiseled it out. You can see there's some of the some of the stuff still in the background there where I was working on it on the other side of the table. And then I sanded it, put it on my belt sander and really sanded it, got it nice and smooth, got the chisel marks out of it. And then I got my little homemade tri-square and I tried the base, the bottom of the bowl and the base, make sure they were straight and didn't have any warps or gaps. And so the next step is to glue this on. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'll have to get my press back over here and I'll start gluing on this and uh, may, see, may put a finish on it. I don't know, it wasn't really intended to be a finished bowl, but let me take this next step and I'll see kind of what it looks like.
let this sit there a minute and get tacky so it won't slip. Make sure it's lined up right, then I'm going to put it in the press. All right, so I've got the bottom glued on it, the base. Uh, it's not perfectly straight. Uh, for first try, I think that's a pretty good bowl. Uh, it's this sort of a procedure, first time I've done that sort of thing. Uh, could have been better, as always. Uh, I got, this one doesn't have any uh, marks, grill marks left on it. No marks left, I'm getting better at that. And I'm slowly going through this book, going to learn these procedures. This is, every one of these is a practice. I'm not really looking to make a fine finished bowl yet because I've still got a lot of techniques to perfect. Anyway, I'm going to put a little tongue oil on this, uh, clean it up a little bit. I've got a little bit of glue to remove. And I'm going to put a little tongue oil on this and then we'll come back and see what it looks like. I put a little bit of tongue oil on it. Uh, poplar doesn't really finish out real nicely. Painting is about the best way to go. Some some pieces you can get some that work out pretty well. Uh, I've done pretty well on some of them with some medium stains. Uh, it looks kind of muddy if you get too dark. Uh, it's not just an exceptionally pretty wood. It's basically like a secondary wood for furniture making and such as that. But it's an easy wood to work with, especially in a practice situation like this. I'm just practicing on these bowls. And uh, I'm not unhappy with this. It could be a lot better. But I'm not going to get into really exotic woods until I get a little better at this. I'm improving, I think, with each bowl. And I just keep moving forward and making bowls. So I'm going to call this one good for this, this video. And uh, this actually wasn't the next bowl in the book. This was an alternative to the first bowl, which was this one. And I made two of those, of course. If you see that video, I'll put a link to it down in the description. It should be in the playlist. Um, I'm making use of this bowl to keep my little spare parts hanging around here when, I'm, uh, when they're not mounted on my uh, press. So that keeps them from rolling off on the, on the floor and what have you when I'm working. Uh, so th we're going to use these bowls for things like that. Wife's got an idea of using them to hold some stuff at our consignment shop. But uh, long story short, that's the end of this video. I hope you like it. Uh, I'm learning a little better how to sand and how to drill it, and I'm going to get better as I go. So thanks for watching. And if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. I'm going to do more of these bowls, and they're going to get a little more exotic as I go. So I hope to see you in the next video.